Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is something that will be one of the most important maneuvers you'll ever learn. And that's the uh, engine failure uh, simulator emergency approach and landing. Uh, the emergency approach and landing. Basically, we're going to teach you what to do if you have an engine failure in the aircraft. And this, again, will be something that you will have to demonstrate to your check pilot so that they can verify that um, you do know what to do in an emergency. So if I have an engine failure in a single engine airplane, uh, our decision is kind of based on our altitude. If I have enough altitude, I may want to try and restart the engine, maybe with something simple as a uh, engine-driven uh, fuel pump failure, which we have an auxiliary fuel pump, so that would sort out the problem very easy. So it may be something very simple as that. Uh, it may be that we were running off one tank by mistake and ran out of fuel in the one tank, which typically we run the fuel from both tanks and the Cessna. So it could be a multitude of things. So if we have enough altitude, we may want to try and troubleshoot. Uh, if we don't have enough altitude, if we were in the traffic pattern per se and doing our uh, landings and we had an engine failure in the traffic pattern, in that situation you wouldn't want to conduct any checklists. You want to just glide the airplane to the runway and land safely. Here at 3,500 feet, this is enough altitude here where we can try and troubleshoot. So if we did have an engine failure, we're going to do our ABCs. First thing will be airspeed. We want to get our best uh, glide speed, which would minimize our descent rate, giving us uh, optimizing our time to make decisions and think about what we want to do. And the Cessna, with the flaps up, that's 68 knots. So what we're going to do to get 68 knots is when, if, if the engine fails or when it fails, we want to pitch for this pitch attitude right here, the same pitch that you had for cruise flight at 100 knots and 2350 RPM. But as we discussed earlier, for me, that was the horizon on top of the magnetic compass. So that would give me the same airspeed at the power idle, and that will give me, six, uh, not same airspeed, sorry, they'll give me 68 knots, which would be our best glide. So once I've set my pitch, I'm going to set my trim so that the airplane, I don't have to keep fighting it, it'll fly, it'll, it'll fly itself, basically. So once I've got my airspeed, the next thing to do is the B, A, B, C, B, find your best field. Now obviously the best field is an airport. Uh, if there's an airport close by and we know we can make the airport, you can glide to the airport and, and obviously contact the tower if the tower at the airport. If not controlled, uh, if you have time, let the traffic pattern know that uh, you have an engine failure and you want to land and so they everyone can get out your way. At least if you talk to the control tower, they'll get everyone out your way too. Uh, obviously, declare emergency, mayday, mayday, mayday. Now, uh, if the if you don't know if you can make an airport, or if the airport is you you in question if it's too far or not, the Cessna can glide about one and a half miles per thousand feet in uh, zero wind condition. So, uh, basically, just if you're thinking about going to the airport, be 100% sure that you can make the airport without stretching the glide out. But if you don't have an airport, what do you do? Well, you're going to land in a field, okay? A couple of things you want to think about when picking a field. Uh, one, make sure it's big enough. Uh, make sure it's about the size of a runway. You don't want to pick a very small field, otherwise your margin of error is very low, and very small. And uh, we want to give ourselves the largest margin of error in case we make mistakes, uh, or in case we, you know, not uh, accounted for the wind. So, the largest field possible. Another thing you want to take into account is the field should be clear of obstructions. There should be no power lines, no uh, uh, animals, uh, no houses. You want to be very careful of fences, especially when it comes to field, because typically fields are agricultural fields, so they have fences. And uh, being agricultural fields, they also have crop rows. Uh, if you're going to land into a field, you want to land parallel to the crop rows, not perpendicular because you might actually cause more problems for yourself by flipping the aircraft. Another thing we want to think about is the wind. We want to try and land with the best uh, headwind possible. Now, if the field and the wind are perpendicular, as the crop rows are perpendicular to the wind, land with a crosswind, land with the crop rows. We land with crosswinds every day. Uh, it's better to land with a good field than land with a he uh, headwind. Obviously, we'd want to find a field that lines up with the headwind. Now, if the winds uh, today, the winds are out of the southwest, which means two things. I can land south or west, and I can, I'll still have a headwind. 
So we'll try and find a field that has the crop rows aligned with the south, south of the uh, wind or a westerly wind. Once you found your field, your field also has to be close enough to civilization that if you need help, someone won't can come on and give you help. You don't want to land too far away that uh, no one can give you help. The next thing to do is conduct your checklist. Now the checklist is made up of memory items, uh, which you do by obviously by memory, and then you verify the items once you've done it by memory, and then you go into the read and do part of the checklist. And effectively, that the memory items is try and restart the engine. Now the memory items would be something like fuel selectors on boat, the fuel shutter valve in, the mixture control full forward, fuel pump on, and magnetos make sure to verify they're on both. Now don't have to do all of those things to start the engine. Any one of those things could uh, cause the engine to restart. And if the engine does restart, we will stabilize the aircraft and try and uh, land at the soonest, uh, most practical airport. Uh, so the first time we're going to try and restart the engine, we'll, st we'll st uh, try and restart it because of fuel starvation or engine driven fuel pump failure. And then we'll try and do a second restart in case the engine was flooded and go from there. So here's what it looks like. So simulated engine failure. If the engine fails, there it goes. I can hear the RPM decrease. The first thing I'm going to do is keep my pitch what it was for cruise. Horizon on top of the compass and trim it out. And then my field, is, I already picked my field. Now the field off my left wing, if I look off the left wing, you'll see fields aligned with uh, westerly heading. As the fields, if you look at my strobe light, it's the one touching right there. So what I'm going to do is fly right to my field. I have enough altitude, so I'll have to start circling over the field as I lose altitude and do my checklist. So fuel selectors on both, fuel shutter valve in, mixture full forward, fuel pump on, and magnetos verify on both because the prop is still spinning. If the engine doesn't restart, we'll try the flutter start. Fuel selector on both, fuel shutter valve in, mixture will simulate idle cutoff, throttle will simulate full forward, fuel pump off, and then verify the magnetos are on both. Quickly check at your field, look at your airspeed. I got all trimmed, you know, notice that I got to go of the yoke. The aircraft is still flying at 68 knots. All right, that didn't work. So what I'm going to do is pull out my checklist, verify my I have did me the memory arms correctly. I'll squawk 7700, uh, simulate that, and mayday, mayday, mayday on 121.5, or the last frequency we were on with air traffic control, and tell them who we are, where we are, and what happened, and where we're going down. I'm right over my field. All right. Verify my memory items. And, uh, my memory items I've completed correctly. All right, if we have time, we'll do the read and do part, which is passion to seats and seat backs upright, seat belt harnesses on, field shutter valve out, mixture uh, simulate idle cutoff, field shutter valve simulate idle cutoff. Flaps we'll put down as we need to when we're coming into land. And by battery switch off, master switch off when we have the landing assured, cabin doors unlatched, touchdown slightly tail low, and apply brakes heavily. Now, a lot of these are simulated items. We don't actually do them, but we'll read the checklist. I'm circling over my field, lose altitude, and what I'm planning to do is be, uh, some, we're going to circle my, my touchdown point so that I have full visual of the field and can assess the field as I'm circling. I'm trying to descend to a point where I can enter onto a normal traffic pattern uh, and get to my high key point, which is a beam, my point of attended touchdown. And uh, I want to be about a thousand feet AGL at that point. I'm going to clear the engine here. Now your instructor will do this. You don't, you don't have to worry about it. And circling to get to my high key point at 1000 feet AGL. And once I get to my high key point, I'll conduct almost like a normal traffic pattern, but adjusting for the winds. Uh, and using flaps as we need to. You won't use the flaps like you would in a normal traffic pattern, but you'll fly the pattern uh, normal. So I'm assessing my field. I'm, it looks like a good field. I'm looking over my left side. And looking for any power lines now. There's a power line to the southern portion of the field, so I'll make sure I don't go to the south. Now circle till I'm about 1,500 feet, 1,500 feet. When I go to 1,500, I'll stop circling and proceed to my high key point which again is on the downwind, a be my point of intended touchdown. And I'll, why I'm stopping at 1,500 feet is because I'll lose about another three, 400 feet going to my high key point. Uh, so I can arrive at or above my high key point, not too high, obviously. Here's 1,500. Here's my point of intended touchdown. If I look and dip the wing, that's my point of intended touchdown. So here's 1,500. I will 
level the wings. Still pitching for 68 knots. Proceed to my high key point. So I go on the high key point, I'll keep my descent going and attempt to get to my low key point, which is about the base to final turn at about 500 to 600 feet AGL. Turning downwind now, there's my field off my left wing, just about your 8 o'clock. And still pitching 68. Now here I am at 1,100, so I'm slightly high, which is okay. I can extend my downwind uh, slightly to account for the higher uh, altitude. Now I'm assessing the winds. Am I getting pushed? Uh, is my ground speed very high, which means I have to turn earlier on my base? Or is my ground speed low, which would be a normal pattern? So I'm still looking. And it looks right about here that I can get to my high key, my low key point at 500 feet. So I'll clear left and turn to the left and to the base leg. And if I am high, which I can judge right now, I'm going to increase my flaps to 10. So 68 knots, flaps 10. And decrease your pitch about one degree or one inch to maintain your 68. And I'm still high, flap uh, 68 knots, flaps 20. And here's my low key point as I'm turning base to final. 600 feet. This is about 500 feet AGL, so I'm going to go around at this point, but I can make my field. As I'm turning, you can see the field right in front of us. About 500 feet AGL, I'm going to go around. That's what you do in the simulated emergency approach and landing uh, maneuver. And uh, hopefully, if this actually happens to you, or hopefully it never happens to you, if it does, you'll, be, you'll know what to do and be able to make a safe landing and uh, deal with an emergency in a safe way.